Hello, and this is our project on breaking a stick by Eric Kim and Austin Chi. Broken stick problem is a classical problem in mathematics. The original problem states that the, what, to find the probability of a triangle that is formed from breaking a stick into three pieces. So the original answer to this is one fourth, and this problem has been extended to many different variations such as finding the expected area of these formed triangles and breaking the sticks into more than three parts. So the expected largest area is already known for the triangle and quadrilateral case, but not for any other polygon. This problem has also been extended to 3D applications where you can make a tetrahedron out of these uh, out of six parts. So it's easy also shown that the largest area in any case is when the polygon is circled. Say there exists a polygon maximal area that is not cyclic for the sake of contradiction. As shown in the bottom right figure, you can then choose four of its vertices that form a quadrilateral that is not cyclic. However, you can then increase the area of the angle by, by making that quadrilateral cyclic while keeping the shaded region. Our project deals with the following problem as shown on this slide. If a stick is randomly broken into five parts, what is the expected value of the largest possible area that can be made from these five pieces? Before finding the exact value, we are going to simulate breaking a stick into five parts by picking four breakpoints and splitting the stick at these points. We then will find the largest possible area in each case and then find the average of the largest possible areas over many trials. Unlike the triangle and quadrilateral case, finding the area for cyclic pentagon and cyclic polygons with a greater number of sides is much harder. For the triangle and quadrilateral, they're formed by herons and Brahmaguptas that finds the area quite easily. But on this side, there's a much more complicated method, uh, as you can see. On this side, we construct a 7th degree polynomial in terms of a variable u, which comes from the side lengths of the pentagons which is represented by A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5. So the area of the cyclic pentagon is represented by K, and the value 16K squared is called U. Sigma values obtained from the side lengths are used to construct the 7th degree polynomial, in terms of U, as you can see in the first and second images. And so then we get that polynomial in terms of U. So the correct value of 16K squared will be one of our roots. So, using the SimPy library, we are able to find the roots using the code, and this part was not so hard. But the hard part is that the polynomial gives multiple complex and sometimes negative roots, so we are able to quickly eliminate many roots. But the problem is, the polynomial gives several positive roots, so we can have a hard time figuring out which positive root is the area that we need. So far, we have coded an area formula to create a polynomial that gives roots that are the area of the pentagon. The formula is able to produce an area just from the side lengths of the cyclic pentagon. Our main problem is that this formula doesn't always give one positive real root, so it can be hard to discern which root is the area that we desire. Our solution to this problem of several positive roots is to find an approximate area for the largest pentagon and choose the root that results in the area closest to our approximation. In order to find the approximate area, we first split the pentagon into a cyclic quadrilateral and triangle with a diagonal such that the sum of the triangle's two sides that are on the pentagon is minimized, as you can see in the diagram, where AED is the, tri is the triangle. We then calculate the area of the cyclic quadrilateral and triangle using the approximated side length and sum them. This results in a fairly good approximation of the area of the pentagon, which allows us to choose the correct route in almost all cases. As we plan on running the simulation for many cases, the computation time may take a long time. Sometimes, the broken parts will give a degenerate pentagon, and no pentagon will be created. So instead of spending pointless calculation time for this pentagon, we will try to quickly eliminate cases in which there is no possible pentagon that can be created. This will save a lot of time for uh, cases that don't have an area 
as we don't have to cr construct that 7-3 polynomial we described earlier. So, in addition to this, we also are using an imperfect er method in our area approximation in order to save more computation time. Although it's possible that this will give us the wrong error in very few cases, the result will still be relatively close to the correct answer and should not affect the result greatly. In addition to this, we explored using parallel processing to further speed up the process and run our simulations even faster. We're currently almost finished with our simulation for the Pentagon area and hope to get a concrete value sometime within the next few weeks. Once we get this value, we plan to conduct a statistical analysis due to the error that is incurred by our approximations. We will be able to construct a range for the correct value with high certainty. Beyond this, we will try to find a better approximation for the area and hope that this will give us more accurate simulations. We have been looking into investigating other statistics of these pentagons, such as the largest circle that can be put inside the pentagon so that we can get a lower bound for the area. After we complete our simulations and analysis, we will work towards finding the exact value for the pentagon and eventually the hexagon and n-gon cases.